An opportunity to play in the Boston Symphony, especially a principal job, is something that comes up so rarely. I mean, for most instruments, it's really once in a lifetime and, and almost certainly once in a professional lifetime. So at the time that this position opened up, the one that I hold now, I was fortunate because it came at a point in my professional career that I think I was both ready for it, that I had done enough playing and enough of the right kinds of ensembles to be ready um, physically, musically, and technically. But I hadn't spent so much time in the trenches that it was kind of too late to make that kind of change. There are great differences between being a soloist and being an orchestral player. And I think that I, like many of my colleagues, have made a career that involves those two things, uh, as well as chamber music, as well as teaching. I, I mean, really, I started out as an orchestral player in terms of my professional career. I, I, my first job was in Halifax, uh, Nova Scotia in Canada. And all along until I came to the BSO, I had always made it a real point to, to try and do as many different things musically as I could to involve uh, solo playing, to involve chamber music and so forth. And honestly, it's one of the things that I really value about my position here at the BSO. Many other big orchestras, and I'll take my previous job in the Montreal Symphony as an example, the volume of work, the number of weeks that we work is about the same, but it's a little more, you know, the rhythm is a little more stately at the BSO. We typically play, most weeks we play one program, uh, and we have predictable times of the year where we're not, you know, either it's pops or it's, it's a break. And that sort of stays the same year to year, where when I was in Montreal, it was a bit, it just seemed so frantic sometimes, which is not to say that the music making suffered, it just meant that we might do two, three or more programs a uh, week and we would tour and we would record. So this has meant for me that actually it's been easier in the BSO, uh, even though it's a more prominent position, but it's actually been easier for me to find those little interstitial weeks or half weeks where I can go and take on other projects, whether that's solo playing or um, giving workshops or conducting. So that, that's actually been a real plus, and I know that uh, that's always been something that's, that's been honored at the BSO because, because it does feed into the general character of the group if, if all of the players are, are doing a lot of different things, have a, bring a lot of other musical concepts and inspirations to the table. Well, it's a nice luxury to have a lot of instruments. You know, French horns aren't cheap, but when you look at what you pay for a great cello or a great violin, I mean, it's not even in the same ballpark. So, so to own a few instruments is not, I mean, it's a luxury for someone who's struggling, uh, but it's not a, a huge expense. And it does give you, uh, it just gives you a few more choices of, of palette. Um, sometimes there are particular kinds of music that will fit a, a kind of instrument better. I mean, if it's very high and very exposed, you might pick an instrument in a higher key, what we call a descant horn. And sometimes if you want a really big, lush sound, you get an instrument that makes that a little bit easier. And some of it, honestly, is just kind of a bad habit. You know, it's like almost everyone collects something and I end up with a lot of horns in the basement. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's a very interesting thing to look at um, the way sections evolve of the orchestra. Uh, and and it, has, it has rolled over, uh, changed almost entirely since I started. And it really, it's not, well, I guess it is kind of a long time ago now, but it's been about 14 years. You know, I think with any orchestra, to some extent, there's a kind of, there's a, there's a tradition, and it's, it's, it's difficult to say exactly how that gets transmitted, because sometimes it's done in a way people might expect, where people discuss very specific details of sonority and attack and style. More often it's just you kind of soak it up. You know, you, you show up and you hear what people are doing, you match them. Um, and of course, there's an interrelationship with the music directors, of course. So, I think, though, that with some orchestras, it's stronger than others. That, that kind of concept of sound 
has a longer and stronger history. And that's certainly something that I've really honored at the BSO because, um, because it does have such a strong tradition. And it's, it's a difficult thing to put your finger on. You know, I mean, we talk about things like French sound, a German sound, and we look at specific music directors or specific principal players. But the more time I've spent here and the more time I've spent studying old recordings and listening to what old music directors have to say, it seems more to me that there's just wherever those sources are from, it's, it's become a BSO tradition of brass sound and it has endured. I mean it hasn't stayed identical um, but there's an approach that we have like a, a brilliance and uh, a, you know a kind of a kind of fire to the approach that I think uh, we take great pains to keep and we take great pains you know those of us who are principal players particularly and now being a somewhat senior member it sort of falls on me to some extent to make sure that uh, we're, we're moving that tradition on, you know, ahead to whoever takes over when I'm gone. I've always been physically active. Uh, I did a lot of sports in high school, very poorly, uh, but very enthusiastically. And like most people, you know, I've gone through times in my life where I was a little more idle or a lot more idle. In the last couple of years, I've just, I started to you know, kind of look at the, the clothes I was buying were having to be a little bit bigger every time and so so I decided if I was going to start to make a change it was probably time that I do that because you can't put it off forever. Um, so yeah, I've been doing, uh, I've really kind of embraced my physical fitness a little more in the last two or three years and um, I do triathlons of various lengths and I, I bike and run, swim a lot. And it's interesting actually uh, on stage because you feel like, you know, if you're in good shape physically, you feel like you breathe better. You can, if you sit in your chair for six, seven hours of rehearsal in a day, you don't feel like as beaten up at the end of the day. Um, it's easier to hold the instrument. So a lot of these just subtle things, it makes work a lot easier. I've been conducting well, let's say with some degree of seriousness for about 20 years, uh, professionally for about 10. I would say conducting reasonably well for about five. <laughs> uh, so I, I have an orchestra, I'm the music director of the Hamilton Philharmonic uh, in Ontario, uh, which I've been doing, this is my sixth year now. So obviously this is something that, uh, that I've been interested in, in a long t for a long time. Many orchestral musicians spend a little bit of time on stage sitting there watching somebody and saying, I could do that better. And so after about the 20th time I said that to myself under my breath, I thought, well, okay, so prove it. 